Alright, here's my Amazon dropshipping Excel system. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the order sheet of the system. And each order starts with the actual Amazon order number. So um, I'm going to just make up a number, in this case, 123-1234567-1234567. You can, of course, you will copy and paste the order number from Amazon to here, from your seller account. You then put the date that the item sold. You just put May 3rd, sold date. I usually just use whatever sold date is on um, Seller Central. Consider there are different time zones, so sometimes you might wonder why the date is what it is. But uh, just use the date that's on Amazon. It just keeps things a little simpler. You then have the ship by date and deliver by date. These are really not necessary, but I put them here just in case you want to actually place these in. It's good to know that you need to ship it by a certain date or that you need to deliver your order that it needs to be delivered by a certain date you know it's not a bad thing to keep track of then you can put the actual date that it, when it ships you're gonna actually get the tracking number and then you can put the date that you confirm the shipment so the good thing about having ship by date here is I can compare it and say oh did I ship by the date I was supposed to ship by so let's just say the ship by date is May uh, let's say I have a good handle in time like a five day handling or something um, I'll just put, uh, actually I'll do a short handle in time. So let's say I'm supposed to ship it by the 5th, let's just say. But let's say it doesn't, you know, I have a long delivery time and doesn't need to deliver until like the 10th. That's not so long, but it's like a week. Date shipped. When it actually ships, I'll come back and put the date. Okay, but I'm looking at this as if you were processing, processing the order now, all right? You then have the status. This really has to do with what did I do with the order so far, so far. Um, I would put processed if you're actually processing it right now. But if you're not going to process it yet, you can put like pending. If it already shipped, you can put shipped, so on and so forth. I'm going to put processed and I'm going to put May 3rd because I'm assuming that you're processing the order. All right, you should then put the ASIN. Again, you can get all this. You're going to get this from Amazon. The order is going to tell you which ASIN was ordered. All right, I'm going to use this ASIN from the previous example as the ASIN in this order. All right, Amazon is also going to tell you how many they bought. If it's a big desk, I mean, normally it's going to be one, but they might buy two, right? So you put whatever the quantity is that they bought. Unit price. Um, price can change, right? So you're going to put whatever price is on the order. All right, so just because I had a certain price over here that when I was trying to calculate, this is really just more about uh, prediction over here these prices predicting the price that I can use but when you actually get an order we're looking at the actual price the thing sold for right so you're gonna put the actual so let's say it actually sold for 159.99 or something like that okay that's your subtotal um, this is what you know the subtotal for the order shipping this is actually meaning that you charged shipping to the buyer but Ordinarily, you know, a lot of uh, drop shippers don't charge shipping, right? You try to include it in the cost or you get free shipping. Okay, so I'm going to leave it blank or just put zero. Buyer tax. Sometimes the buyers do pay tax. I'm going to say, let's say the buyer paid like $5 tax. So, um, so this is going to tell you what the buyer paid in total. Okay, you don't get the tax, right? That's going to Amazon. So, um, that's why I have the total sale, which is what you're actually getting. All right. Um, if you had charged the buyer shipping, then you would have a higher total sale, right? Of course, the shipping will be included, but just to show you that it, you know, total sale means the subtotal is basically what you're getting paid. Okay. What the buyer is paying to you. Okay. That's your sale. However, you also have this thing called a fee. So, you put in the fee, let's say the fee is 15%. Well, then your seller fee is going to be $24. So now your net payment means I'm taking the sale and I'm subtracting the fee. Okay, so the buyer paid this to you, right? They paid this to you. But you got to subtract the fee, the seller fee. So this is going to give you the net payment, which you're going to receive net. All right, let's go over here. Okay, that then, um, that's pretty much the Amazon side of things. So the way I see every order, it's basically the marketplace side, in this case Amazon, and then there's the supplier side. 
All right? So for drop shippers, you have these, you know, two sides, right? Um, let's say again, the supplier is Home Depot. Okay, again, I don't automatically pull this from products because you might not use the same supplier, right? You might have planned to use Home Depot, but then you might have changed for this order, right? So that's why you have to put in what supplier you used, okay, over here. Then you're going to put in the account. And in the previous video, in the product video, I mentioned that you might have a code or type it in a certain way uh, for the supplier. So try to type in your supplier the same way here. Okay, type it in the same way each time. Okay, I'm trying to get this back. Sorry, computer is doing stuff. All right, so try to use the same, you know, abbreviation. So I'm going to use the same Hamdep. You know, it's just a good idea. It's good practice to use the same thing. And then you'll have the account. All right. So in other words, you might have some people have like I know I always had multiple accounts. So um, you might have your whatever Gmail account and then your second Gmail. So what is the actual account for the supplier? You're going to put that in here in case you have more than one. And then you put the order number. Okay, so this might be like shopping or something like that at Gmail. Okay, put this the order number from the supplier it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm gonna move this uh, try to move this along. Supplier subtotal, you're just gonna get that from your supplier. Okay, maybe you paid a hundred dollars for it for whatever reason, subtotal. And maybe your tax was five dollars and let's say your shipping was five. So uh altogether your total supplier cost is $110. This is what you spent to order the item from your supplier. You spent $110. Then it will calculate your profit. How does it do that? It will take you, column U, which is your net payment, and it simply just subtracts, because remember, the net payment means that they already took out the fees, and this is what you're left with. Um, and then we're going to take that net payment and we're going to subtract this total supplier cost and see what you have left. All right. And then you have left $25.99. When you subtract the original cost, that's what you have left. Uh, okay. Let's go back over here. So this is your margin and this is your markup. Now, then if you wish, this is optional. Again, the cash back, right? But uh, if you're getting cash back, why not use this, right? So if you're getting cash back, great. I mean, you're going to get even more profit. 5% cash back, 2% site. You know, if you use a portal uh, cash back site, wow, 550 on the car, $2, all right? And then if you got any other cash back, you can put that in here and it'll be added. Like if you got like a dollar somewhere. Somehow, um, you know, usually you don't, but so I'm going to actually add that. Sorry, I didn't actually add that in here. Uh, so if you got like a dollar, okay, and I'm going to copy this down. So you will already have this. You don't have to. I just did that, but you should already have that on your copy. Okay. Um, add in that other one. Okay, so that's the total cash back. Then you have the total profit, right? Total profit. Taking this cash back, adding it with the profit you already made. And then that's going to give you the new margin and a new markup to go with that. Because like I discussed in the product video, um, a lot of times your cash back, cash back comes way after, right? Cash back is not instant. So um, that's why it's good to know your initial over here profits, then over here your total profits, all right? And um, in fact, what I'll... Eh, yeah, well, this is fine. Yeah, profit. So you know that this is initial profits over here because you'll see initial profit here. And you know that these are total because it says total cash back and total profit over here. And that is basically it. So basically, um, that's how you use this order sheet. And basically, the order sheet is, I mean, it's really, the way I see it, it's really about doing the calculation for you of the cost and the profit. That's really what it's for. That's one part, but the other half of it, really the first half is really just to have that order information so that when something happens, if you get like a return or something like that, 
All right, if you get a return, oh, I'm just going to save this. You know, the order number is going to come up. You're going to get an email saying, oh, such and such an item has you know been requested for a return. And then as I show demonstrated in the other video, you can search. Okay, if, you, if you're looking for this order number, I'm going to copy it. Okay, imagine you have like a hundred orders in here or more, right? You can click here over the column, Control F, or you can use Find and Select, Find. You can paste the order number right in here. Okay, or type it. Okay, I'm gonna have to type it because, and it will automatically find that order and jump to it right away. It will highlight it like it just did, right? So you'll say, oh, okay, this is the order, and then you have all this all this information now you can track down the order right down to the right back to the supplier right where you got the order from okay how much you paid for it all that information the account the account is very important because which account are you going to sign into at the supplier to find the order number right so if you have more than one account very important all right and so that's what this is really about it's about locating the order information um, but also and also calculating the profit that you're that you earned on the order so there's you know it's dual purpose there's two very important um, pieces um, to using an orders sheet having an order sheet all right and again this tells you the number of times that this order appears right so you should not be processing the same order twice right but with drop shipping it could happen because you could do one order you do an order but there's it's not like eBay where you have a thing that says market shipped right there's no market shipped until you actually put in the tracking number so you know you could put an order do it and then you know forget that you already did that order I mean it's possible if you have a lot of orders so when you put the order number in here it's letting you know hey you have one you know so this is good because if I tried to do this order a second time and I, you know, we're down here and I pasted this again, it's going to say two. And I'm going to say, wait a minute, I have two? That means I already entered this order number before. Delete it. I want this to be, you know, just one. And now it's back to zero. All right, so that's what this does. It tells you how many times that this order number showed up. And it should not be more than one time. All right, you shouldn't be seeing the same order uh, more than once. Okay, so, you know. It's one of those little features that I made as I realized that this was an issue that you could potentially have, you know, with my experience, you know, this issue that I had when I had a lot of orders, I said, well, you know, which one of these did I already do, you know, so um, that's pretty much how this works in a nutshell. So, all right, I hope you find this helpful and do check out the other remaining videos. But most importantly, make sure you get a copy of it and make sure you actually use it. And if you have comments, you know, suggestions, or questions, just let me know. Okay, time to recharge this computer, plug it back in. And um, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Make sure you check out the next video, which, will, which should be uh, refunds, how to use the refund sheet. Thanks and take care.